Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to create a virtual machine using VMware Workstation and this is going to be from an ISO file. In a previous video we showed you how to do this using the uh, VMware player so if you want to see the difference in your options and how the process works between Workstation Pro and player you can watch our player video. So what I want to do, I just did this installation of VMware Workstation and you get a 30-day trial to use it for free and if you like it then you buy it. So that's what we're going to do for now. So when you get to the screen, you can click on create a new virtual machine here or from the file menu. And then I always like to do a custom so I could pick all my options. So you want your compatibility. So if you're just planning on using it within uh, Workstation 16 here, you could just stick it with that. Or if you want to have compatibility with older versions in case you're going to import it into another version, you could pick one of those. And it tells you the limitations when you use Workstation 16 as to how much memory and processors and so on. And it says it's also compatible with ESX servers in case you want to export yours to a vSphere server. So click on Next. And so I'm going to use this Windows 10 ISO file that I have. I'll put a link to the uh, uh, site where you could download your own copy of the Windows 10 ISO. It doesn't mean you're going to, you know, it's going to be a licensed copy. You could just install it and use it without the activation until it starts nagging you. You could also do it from a CD if you if you like, or a flash drive, or you could create the VM and then go back and install the operating system later. Okay, so I'm going to choose this file here. Click next, and I'm going to give this a name: Windows 10 Pro 2, because I already have a Windows 10 Pro computer. And looks like it found the right folder for me. So it's up. Oh, no, actually, no, it didn't. We're going to put it with my virtual machine here. On my D drive under that. Okay, so now I have it in the right folder. So I'll click next. I like to keep mine on it on my uh, D drive rather than my system drive for more space. Okay, and then you have you want to do the older BIOS uh, firmware type or the newer UEFI. You could pick between the two of those. I'm going to go with UEFI. All right, number of processors and cores per processor. So, okay, let's say I'll make this one quad core processor. So you can just choose that based on the needs of your VM. Now keep in mind for processing power and memory, it's going to depend on how much uh, memory and processing power you have on the host computer. So don't think you could go picking 128 gigs of memory when you only have 16 in your computer. So I'll bump this up to four for this VM. Click Next. And then for the network connection, if you're going to be using your network adapter on your host computer as, the, as your VM's network connection, so you want to use, you just keep the NAT setting here. Or if you don't need an internet connection, you could use don't use the network connection. And then for the SCSI controller types, it tells you, you know, gives you some options here. So if we're doing 64 bit windows, so we can't use any of these two, so we're going to go with their recommended setting there. And then for the hard disk type, they recommend using the non-volatile memory express type of hard disk. That's the latest and greatest kind of flash memory type of thing, like for flash drives. So we're going to go with that. Um, for this, the host computer and the guest VM have to both support this in order to use that, by the way. So we're going to click Next. And then we're going to create a new disk. You could use an existing disk if you have one. I'm just going to do 20 just for the sake of this. And then if you want to have it allocate all the disk space now, it'll take up 20 gigs on your hard drive, even though you're not going to be using 20 gigs of space right away. Or you could use this, the uh, virtual disk single file, multiple file option here. So what that'll do is if you have a, let's say you make a 20 gig disk and you're only using five, it's only going to take up five on your actual computer hard drive of your computer here and it will expand as needed and then there's the option for single file and multiple files so if I go to my ones that I installed in VMware player so this one I did the multiple file option so you can see for one hard drive it split it up into all these individual files and then for the one I did oops try that one there the one I did it just made one VMDK file for the hard drive so it's up to you you know for backup purposes or if you need 
copying stuff over network. You, you know, if you don't want to transfer huge files, you'd rather do smaller ones, you could do it that way. So I'm going to do the single file option, 20 gigs, and then next. And then that's the name of the, the disk file it's going to use. And let's make sure it's going in the right place, which it's not. So let's go. Okay. And then next. And then you could customize the hardware again if you want to go back to the screen, if you want to change anything for your, or if you want to add something that's not there, like a floppy drive or serial port or something like that, which I'm going to leave it as is. And then you have this option to power on the virtual machine after creation, which you want to do so we can install Windows. I'm going to click on Finish. It's going to create that 20 gig disk. OK, so now it's starting the VM. And then press any key to boot from the attached ISO file. And then you can install Windows just like normal. And real quick, let's go back and look at the uh, VMDK file. So right now it's 8 gigabytes. You need to know to up to a maximum of 20, so it's only using 8 right now. And so once this is done, you can kind of finish installing, and then you'll have your VM listed here in your list, and you can start and stop them as needed. And you can run as many at a time as your guest hardware will support, and then start using VMware. All right, simple as that. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.